Whenever you're going to start a project, it always helps to have a guide. And sometimes it helps not to have to read through something and just have somebody kind of tell you what the process could be like. So in this video, I'm going to go over kind of what the process could be like to work with a Berkshire Hathaway agent like myself and what you kind of can expect from our services. My name is Wazamela Thurmond and I'm local to Hampton Roads area. So basically Southeast Virginia from Richmond down to Virginia Beach and maybe a little bit up towards the Eastern shore and down towards Franklin. That area is where I service most people. And if you are you know, in North Carolina or other places, I'm happy to refer you an agent. Berkshire Hathaway has a ton of agents all over the area and we can find someone to help you. So definitely when you know, only the best will do. Get in touch with an RW Town Realty agent or a Berkshire Hathaway Home Services agent. So for over 35 years, we've been helping people market their property and get the highest, best possible price in Southeast Virginia and Northeast North Carolina. Our portfolio has a lot to offer from first time home buyers to historic residential properties and luxurious waterfront homes. Even multifamily, we are here to help. Now at RW Town Realty, we offer expert guidance and extraordinary services to really help you have all your needs met. We hold a very high standard and with our company, our parent company based in Omaha, North uh, Nebraska, <laughs> um, it's our chairman, Warren Buffett, who really is a, like a definite a testament to what we do for people. Because our CEO is one of the world's most influential people, you can guarantee you're going to have influential range, reach, and influence to market your home and really get that highest possible price. We continuously rank amongst the 100 most respected companies and are on the top four list of the most influential on the planet. Number eight in Fortune 500's 50 most admired companies surveyed and number 18 in Harris's most interactive, reputable study of the 60 most visible companies. So if you want to sell your house and get the highest price, you're going to want to be seen and we're going to make sure you're seen. A real estate agent's job is really to guide you through the process. It can be complex. There are a lot of surprises. One in four deals actually closes exactly the same way that it started. So you really need somebody who's going to be there to go over the hiccups and get you through that. So if you're thinking about, you know, financing, appraisals, inspections, closings, all of that we have available in-house as, as a full service. And as your agent, I am definitely committed to protecting your interest throughout the entire process. We are committed to integrity, honor, professionalism, and expertise. When you meet with the Berkshire Hathaway agent, you can expect to go over the market conditions and really develop an understanding of the right price for your home compared to other recent sales in the neighborhood. We work to find the best places to market your property, including the local multiple listing services, which is what agents have access to, and then as well as websites and social media and anywhere you might see a property marketed. Helping you to repair or stage your home is key. So we'll definitely always suggest small improvements that can make a big difference. Anything from arranging furniture to choosing paint colors or choosing whether or not to remodel or sell as is are key because when we go over exactly what you can net, that is kind of where we see really the decision making start to make sense. We always will arrange for professional photos and videos with their permission taken to make sure that they are advertising your home in the best light and facilitate any tours and open houses, access to the general public and to licensed professionals. Coordinating inspections and appraisals as well as other issues to ensure a smooth process is key. There's a lot of moving parts and some of the things will be scheduled by the person who's trying to buy your home. So you're gonna to need to know when these things are happening. That way we're not getting each other's way and stepping on toes and causing unnecessary delays. So in the process of all of this, you might be wondering, what else am I going to be doing? Definitely providing negotiating expertise. As the buyer does their inspections and starts to get to know the home, they will start thinking of things to ask. And part of their 
representation, if they do have any, is going to be negotiating a better deal for the buyer. And I'll be helping you make sure that you get what you want out of this. And in that process, we might come across some issues. So I'll also be helping you resolve any issues that can possibly void or delay closing. That way we get to our destination on time, which is the closing table. At the end of the day, I'll always be working with you and with the buyer's agent, if there is one, to reach a successful closing time that works for you and is problem-free and less stressful. So I really just wanted to make sure that you would at least have an idea of what these seven steps are because not everyone sells a home that often. It might be your first time. It might be your hundredth time. <laughs> but there are really about seven steps that we take uh, to making sure that we can sell your home successfully. And here they are. Number one is definitely the seller consultation. This is when we kind of discover what your goals are and we figure out how we can align those to you. Two is positioning your home for sale. So that is kind of when we really decide on timelines. Um, and that's when we you know, look at photos. If the photos don't come out right, you don't like the photos, it might be better to sell a home in the fall, but have pictures taken earlier that year when the garden looked its best or the yard looked better. Whatever we need to do to make sure that you're getting what you need in time is really what we do at number two. And this could also be where we find out maybe the neighbors listed their house for sale. And so now we might have to leverage our marketing and our price and our other terms, which could be more than just lowering the price or having more things offered to the buyer. Um, step three would be marketing your home. Four is reviewing an offer. At five will be under contract. Six will be closing. And seven will be definitely celebrating and possibly helping you find a next home if you wanted to do that next. Now, the seller consultation. What goes on at this step? At this step is when you meet the agent. You'll get to know more about what to expect in terms of timeline. You might get a report of all the notes that were taken from your meeting so you can understand the process of how soon or how um, far away you think you might be from moving your things out. And if you might need a pricing strategy, we'll go over that. Um, pricing strategy really depends on your urgency and your um, where you are in terms of readiness to move. So um, we'll also really, depending on how quickly you are ready to move, the market analysis might be discussed at the step. If you feel like maybe the home needs much more work, I would still always recommend going over the market analysis because sometimes when you see that you know, homes are selling for a great price, but they did not update the, the floors. Maybe they left the kitchens and the bathrooms. Maybe they, all they did was just paint the outside. But by looking at that market analysis, we can kind of position whether or not positioning your home at a higher or lower price compared to the last most recent sale, or maybe what an appraiser might use is going to be necessary or if maybe we can just go ahead and market your home today and really get that great price without you having to spend weeks renovating anything because homes based off of your neighborhood and the demand and the supply don't need you to do much more than just put them on the market so that's why the market analysis step is really important um, preparation for paperwork is key because it kind of determines who is representing who and it also helps you get a better idea of what to expect and have that long-term commitment in writing. Um, and at the end of the seller consultation, we'll definitely plan next steps. So we might book the time for the photographer to come and also maybe even schedule days for the open houses. That way you guys can start making plans for what to do that weekend. So you're not having to worry about all that stuff um, long-term. You just know this is the day, this is the time we're going to do it. We can even plan the day that you're going to review the offers too, which is also a great way to position yourself for um, high demand. Now, step two, like I said, of the seven steps to sell your home was, was positioning your home. So after the seller consultation, I'll go back, I'll do my homework, and I'm going to develop a strategy based off of your motivation of how we can best create urgency and demand and also build some negotiating power. So if you see that maybe your property is in an area that 
not many people are selling, um, it might be a good idea for us to price, you know, based off of that and also make sure everyone knows that there is no other homes for sale at the moment and that might stir up some buzz. Now, considering these factors, we're really gonna have to apply these um, in terms of affecting your exposure. So location, condition, competition, terms, and listing price. What is location? You probably know, it's where your property is located. Um, so on top of that, is also the view, um, you know, desirability, all these things kind of add on to where your property is located. And we really want to appeal to the neighborhood benefits as well. And if there's anything that you think would attract you or attract your neighbors or coworkers, I'd love to go over those things and make sure that we highlight them. Condition is also going to affect your exposure. So if we provide a video or photos. Um, these are going to be something we're going to see online. And online presence is really most people's first impression. About 90% of buyers start their home search online and they just find a home and they click the link and they're like, oh, I love the pictures. I want to go there. And it might show the outside. So curb appeal also is really key as well. Um, I want to make sure we highlight these things and just create a really inviting place uh, that feels really open and allows people to kind of use their imagination and picture themselves there because it leaves a positive impression and doesn't have any lingering things that might take away from the beauty of the home, like clutter or too much furniture or some smelly odors or strong paint colors that kind of um, don't really speak to what most people might expect from a home. And that's kind of the reason why even like new construction will do one pink color in most of the house uh, on the first floor and then not really do too much different colors upstairs. So number three in something in the factors that position your home um, for exposure and maximum exposure is competition. So a lot of the times we're going to be doing, doing CMAs uh, for every single property that I go to. I always do a CMA beforehand and then I'll do one the day we go live. I might do another one in the weeks leading up, depending on how many days we have to get ready, uh, just so we can keep an idea of the market and what is going under contract, so we know what people's at, people are accepting and if things are even undergoing under contract, because that shows that there are buyers writing offers. So I really want to help you just create an accurate idea of what um, demand is, because at the end of the day, price is something that the market decides. But if we don't position ourselves in the right price point, we don't get seen correctly. So benchmarking kind of puts us also in a place where we look at, okay, if I'm looking for a home between 150 and 200K and our house is definitely worth maybe 199, it might be best to put the house up for 200K, knowing that it's just a little bit overpriced because it might be so similar to a property that's only worth 215K and those buyers are looking at 200 to 225 possibly. And so if we position our home at 200K, that benchmark puts you at two different price points. That way you get seen by more, more buyers um, than you would have if you just put your home up at 199 and cut off everybody who might not be looking at homes below 200K. Terms also offer you a lot of exposure. So terms are not just um, something that is really always a monetary value, but it can be. Some of these things are just flexibility and timeline. So if you are open to moving at a later date or if maybe you have tenants, um, flexibility with that and flexibility with taking over the lease versus excluding the tenants and having them have no opportunity to um, stay in the property and maybe help the potential buyer have a income producing property because maybe their whole goal was to have an investment property. These are things that we can kind of put into place that can help you um, as well as even repair requests. So if you would be open to 
covering some of the costs of repairs from the proceeds of the sale. These are terms that we can add in there to help your property have more exposure if it's maybe more of a fixer upper or could use some upgrades um, before more people might be willing to purchase it. I would recommend some repair requests terms, especially for people who like to not maybe put pictures of the inside of the property because you might have tenants still in the property and it might be better to just take a picture of the outside, advertise the lease and the rental income, and that could be a great way to position yourself strategically and be flexible. And then maybe once the tenants leave, it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to turn over the home into being something nice before selling or just sell as is. So the listing price is um, also on this list. And the reason listing price is on here is because that is what you are exposing to the world. You That is your sticker price. We want to position your price realistically um, and use a CMA analysis because we're using market data. We can't just make up these numbers. Even though it is nice to say, you know, I've updated the floors, that does add cost value. And that is true, but some buyers don't always see every upgrade as a um, valuable increase could just be a maintenance increase. So that's why we really want to look at the CMA. We're going to position your property competitively and we're going to really highlight what's unique about it. You can expect expert guidance from my insights as we look at all the other things that could benefit you uh, in terms of pricing the home. The reason pricing is so important is because if we could price it too low, it could result in diminishing returns um, because you just lowered your value um, and it could make, make, make people question, you know, is something wrong with the property. Pricing too high can also remove potential buyers too because they might be prime candidate. But if you're looking at that price bracketing standpoint of, okay, Am I pricing 1000 above or am I pricing 50 k above? All these things are going to be um, things that kind of affect whether or not buyers see the value in your property. And it's going to be up to us to really ensure that the words and the description warrant whatever the price might be considered on that scale of too low or too high. I'd like to take some time and show you this diagram um, that is really important. It shows you the percentage of buyers who would consider buying a property um, based off of their perception. And I'm going to just go over it and describe it to you. So if you're looking at market value, about 90% of buyers who see a home that they think is 15% below market value would buy it that say, yep, that's a great deal. So just by pricing 15% below market value, you can expect a quick sale because 90% of buyers will think it's a great deal. If we go 10% below market value, now we see about 75% of buyers would now consider buying the property and they would say it's priced competitively so you could expect multiple offers. Pricing 10% below market value is really great if you're trying to sell quickly but sometimes it can result in difficulty getting the higher price if you don't have too many buyer demands going on. Um, so if not too many buyers are around, you might be better off kind of pricing it at market value. Um, just because when there's when it's a buyer's market, you're more likely to have sitting because they have more options and you don't want to not pay attention to that. Now, if you were to price a property at market value, which is exactly what a property might appraise for. Roughly 60% of buyers now will consider the property reasonably priced. <laughs> um, and that, at that case, it's, it still will probably sell. Now, the problem here is when we start going over market value. So sometimes we do make upgrades and it is warranted to get that, or sometimes you just haven't owned the house long enough and you need that extra 10% to help cover the cost of closing. So you might decide, hey, let's just price it for 10% above market value and just see what the buyers say. When we did 10%, this study 
right here shows that about 30% of buyers now would consider buying the property. And this is where we start seeing some buyer resistance and people start perceiving it as not a good buy. When we went over 15% or more, that's when buyers, only 10% would consider the property. And at that point, it's usually priced too high and likely not to sell. So if you have noticed, that maybe you've tried to sell in the past, you didn't get many showings, you could have had a problem with this where the market value was affecting the percentage of buyers who considered buying the property. And you probably should have priced it at market value, done some more CMAs, um, and just kind of done multiple ones, just really see, you know, what is the best price and kind of go below that. Because once you get multiple offers, it will bring the price back to market value. So you're not losing any money in the process. So one of the things that we will definitely do as a company is promote to prospective buyers. We offer print advertising online, open houses, and other marketing materials. Marketing to real estate professionals is also key because they have the buyers. About 90% of um, buyers are still using agents based off of last year's sales and all the data collected. So it definitely is important that real estate agents know that the home is for sale so that they can invite their buyers and get paid. <laughs> uh, the Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Network is who we market to. We also have our relocation and referral resources. Um, and this is international and all across the country as well because we are a very global brand um, with thousands of agents. We also will advertise through the multiple listing service. We have this program called Reverse Prospect. And for certain multiple listing services, you can go back and see which agents sent your property to their buyers and then contact them and invite them to go show the property or invite them to open houses to make sure that they have a one-on-one -on -one direct reach out to notify them that your property is for sale. And this can do wonders for your property and visibility because that one agent might have 10, 15 buyers, 20 plus, who are all looking for a property that we just sent. Now, direct promotion and other open houses uh, to real estate agents, specifically like a broker's open, can also help make sure that you have great visibility to qualified people who are professional and really are ready to write an offer on your home. Communication with you is also something you can count on. We will review all the marketing activities and the results with you. So if you want to know how many views we're getting on social media or if people are clicking the links, we'll do that as necessary. Our goal is really providing you with marketing that is going to provide you with the best way to reach qualified people as quickly as possible. So we use targeted marketing and this just collects data based off what people are searching and where they're located. And then we kind of design a custom marketing plan around that. You can count on our in-house marketing team as well. We have a whole division of marketing people who are great um, and provide custom work that can be developed. And if you want to do brochures or magazines, even an RW Town uh, newspaper, you can do that as well. And we can review that to make sure that your home stands out and is competitive and get you the quickest sale with the best price possible. Yard signs are something we offer too. So you'll have those uh, for passer buyers. We could do direct mail as well if you're open to that, as well as print advertising. Brochures are key. Uh, for some properties, it really just depends on the type of property and how long you'd like to try and sell the property for. Um, we also do property websites dedicated just to your property with a custom URL. Um, so that way when people Google search your address, they can even go to that and see our videos and our photos all in one place. And as well as a invitation and some type of follow-up system to invite them to tour the property. Email marketing campaigns uh, around the neighborhood and to interested buyers and agents will also help people um, really see that your home is for sale 
and highlight the features and benefits because every day there are thousands of homes that go on Zillow and people, yes, they save them, they heart them, but they keep scrolling. And what we wanna do is really capture these people and invite them to have a conversation, invite them to tour and bring them range, reach and influence so that they write strong offers on your home. And so that's why we really like to add on digital marketing specifically. That's something I like to do. Not everybody does this, but sometimes we'll use a um, within a 15 mile radius or a 50 mile radius, depending on how far you want to advertise. We could do digital marketing on Google websites or social websites, as well as video marketing. Uh, so if people are just scrolling through YouTube shorts or TikTok or any search engines, we'll do ads that could be video too. And those can be more engaging sometimes than just the photo ads as well as providing ads on streaming services like Hulu, um, ESPN, Disney Plus, so that when you're watching, you might actually see a commercial of your home for sale. Now, purchase price is also something that we like to go over. Um, and purchase price is one of the factors that you might be negotiating. It might be something that we figure out needs to be adjusted based off of the market. But this is the amount the buyer offers. We'll also develop an idea of what kind of financing best helps your home sell. And it might be that, you know, working with somebody local um, might help your home sell or offering seller financing and other seller concessions like closing costs or warranties and offering to pay some of the fees of somebody else might help your home sell quickly, depending on <laughs> the feedback that we get. We'll adjust these things. Um, contingencies as well and what type of contingencies might be in place. Sometimes as a seller, you might need to buy a house first and it might be that the sell of your home is contingent on you buying another home or the, the buyer who wants to buy your home might need to be um, to get another mortgage approval or negotiate the appraisal or require certain inspections to be done and certain upgrades to be done before they can move in comfortably. You might also decide that some of your personal property is stuff that you don't want to take with you. You might have some really big furniture that you're just not ready to take with you. <laughs> um, so we might be negotiating some of these personal items and selling your home furnished could actually make you way more money than selling your home without the furnishings. Now, closing costs um, and occupancy dates, as well as timelines and moving dates are something we also would discuss with you. We have a lot of great tools for that to help you figure out what, what to do best. Um, now, reviewing an offer once it, gets accept, once it gets accepted or rejected or countering is something that I will be representing for you, but I will be on your side evaluating and helping you understand what the numbers really mean uh, so that way you don't make a, a decision that has consequences that you didn't intend for. Once your home is under contract, we'll be getting your home ready uh, for the kind of the walkthrough and going over what, what goes next. Because um, you've reached an agreement, we have to really make sure we stick to a strict timeline. And that timeline might include inspections and appraisals or repairs. So... Sometimes it is beneficial to do a pre-listing home inspection, especially if you've already known about pre-existing issues and you've tried to address things or maybe started but didn't finish addressing something. Marketing, that could be an advantage. That way you don't know. Um, you don't know. I mean, that way you know um, you'll be avoiding surprises. But it's not necessary because in Virginia, buyers um, usually have the responsibility of doing their own inspections and having their own representation. They may request some things to be done, but it's totally up to you at the end of the day to agree on how best to address it and whether or not we can come to an agreement on price before agreeing to upgrade anything because sometimes those upgrades add on to the timeline <laughs> and it might be a monetary value that changes versus a, a physical thing 
about your property. Now, appraisers and lender requirements also can come into play depending on whether or not the buyer needs financing. Um, this can kind of come up, especially as a risk when the appraisal is low, um, and that can be a, a point of disagreement or fallout. An option is always to renegotiate the purchase price or consider alternative loans. And that's kind of a great uh, option that we offer specifically at Berkshire Hathaway because we have a mortgage lender, Joy Puckett, who does a um, second opinion option. And so do many other lenders. Uh, number three is we could test the appraisal and just decide, hey, this is what we're going to pay. Buyer, you're going to make up the difference. The lender will be satisfied and we can move on. But it's definitely situation dependent. But the key point is I will be there to help you make an informed decision. That way you understand the bottom line of what you could net, depending on whether or not you agree to any of these different changes since the original purchase agreement was meant um, to be. That's not always how it ends, though. But we definitely can get you to the closing table, which is the final step. Um, and this is when we make, you know, everything official. We sign the documents at the title company or the attorney's office. And at this point, um, the buyer would have already done their final walkthrough of the property with their own agent. So it's really imperative that when we're at the closing table, the home is almost the same as the way the buyer saw it, maybe just without the furniture because you've moved out. Additionally, um, if the buyer did request any repairs be made, they would have done so at this point and we would have already agreed that the repairs have been done and we're ready to close. <laughs> so the next step would be that the seller signs the necessary documents. Usually the seller would do it first, um, but it can be the buyer signs first and then the buyer will sign the necessary documents. They'll usually never meet in person and just have separate signings. Um, and then the settlement agent, which could be an attorney or a company like RW Town Title, will receive the buyer's mortgage funds, down payment, and any other cash to purchase the home. And then step three would be that the settlement agent records the transfer of the deed and reconciles all the money required to transfer the title from the seller to the buyer. Once this is complete and recorded, you'll receive the proceeds of the sale from the settlement and the settlement agent will pay off an existing mortgage if you have one and the buyer will receive the keys to the property which i can provide directly to the sell to the sellers um to the buyer's agent um and then they'll be allowed to move into their house whenever they can so if you have any questions at all about the real estate market the selling process the buying process how it could look working together please feel free to reach out to me my name is Moazamela Thurman, and again, I'm a local Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, RW Town Realty agent, serving mostly Hampton Roads, but I do go all the way up to Richmond and down to Franklin and towards the Eastern Shore, as well as towards Virginia Beach. But I am based mostly in Newport News, in your county on Peninsula, and the South Side. If you're ready to do something, I'm happy to help you reach your goals. Thank you for watching.